Yeah. So, what was the what is the uh, I guess the mythology or the the propaganda you you described it as a propaganda campaign to sort of um, falsely present certain events that happened at West. Um, what what exactly is the story that we're told? Like, what is the story? How is it presented to us? And what did you discover actually happened? Uh, you you. I mean, the title of your book is Massacre Rocks, and that's kind of the, seems like the focal point. If you could talk about that event and like how it's presented to us, uh, to the public more widely, and like what you actually discovered in researching that event. Sure. Well, Massacre Rocks is about 10 miles west of American Falls. It's a state park uh, maintained by the state of Idaho. Mm -hmm. Um, In 1862, there was a massacre of a group of uh, a couple of massacres actually that um, occurred near that area of uh, immigrants traveling through from uh, the east uh, heading for California and Oregon. Um, The portrayal at Massacre Rock State Park um, was that Pocatello, um, who was a Shoshone leader in the 1800s, Um, led a group, a small band of Shoshones uh, against the immigrants and slaughtered them. Hmm. Um, Well, what I, what I found was that Pocatello was not his true name. That was a fabricated name um, that was um, created by the Mormon church. Um, His name was Tumeazo, Hmm. but the interpreter couldn't interpret it couldn't pronounce it. So he gave him, assigned him the name Pocatello. So the whole name is fake. Well, that name is, I just want to comment that that name Pocatello is so different <laughs> from it is. his actual name. Like, how do you misinterpret that? That's, that's crazy. I'm sorry. Well, he, he, he made it up because yeah. he couldn't yeah. pronounce his name. So he just gave him a fake name. Uh, okay. All right. Sorry to interrupt you, but yeah, I just had a no, comment that, on that. That's fine. So, um, what I found in my historical research was that Pocatello was actually determined by the military to play, have played no role in attacking immigrants. Um, and this kind of led me into researching the uh, Mountain Meadows Massacre of September 9th in 1857 uh, that occurred in southern Utah, where um, Mormon leaders dressed as Indians and went in and slaughtered 120 immigrants from Arkansas. Mm -hmm. Um, The the real history of that is only recently coming to light. um, And the the actual role that the Mormon church played in not only carrying it out, but covering it up with propaganda, particularly the the, uh, through the Deseret News, the Mormon newspaper in Mm -hmm. Salt Lake. Mm. So I um, I traced the history from 1857 through 1862 when these incidents occurred at Massacre Rocks. And what I found was that the Mountain Meadows Massacre was not a one-time anomaly. It was a continuing campaign that uh, went on for another five years after 1857 and was brought into southern Idaho um, and northern Utah and uh, the same tactics that were used at Mountain Meadows were used in Idaho at Massacre Rocks. So did uh, Mormon settlers dress up as native peoples in that, in, in all these incidences, these massacres as yes, well? Yes, they did. They so did. Was, this, was this as, because I remember this, I think you mentioned this in maybe your book, um, where, I mean, we think about the Boston Tea Party, you know, leading up to the, the revolution um, in the 18th century. And those people, they, they were white people. They dressed up as natives, so to speak. They put on red paint and all of that. And they went and they dumped all that tea in the, in the Harbor. Right. So what does that mean? Like, why, why do settlers do this? Like, why do they dress up as native people? Is it a way to kind of frame these events like and put it on them like it's their fault or is it just like what is what do you think the purpose of that is i 
Um, <laughs> it, it varies. And there's a really good book called Playing Indian by Philip Deloria um, hmm. that goes into that history uh, okay. from the Boston Tea Party on through the Boy, Boy Scouts and the Girl Scouts and um, uh, the, the uh, high school mascots, use of the mascots for uh, to minimize the culture. Mm -hmm. um, so there's, I, I don't think there's any one reason for it. It's just okay. very common in this country yeah. to uh, mimic native people. Yeah. Yeah. And I, and I think, I just want to say this cause it's like, there are so many, as you, as you reference in your work, the so many references to in the West in particular of just this sort of violent history. Like you mentioned something and I wanted to actually flesh this out a little bit cause I want to know more about it. Because you talk about red face portrayals at pioneer celebrations, and I mean, I again, where I'm at, Southern Idaho, in this area, in Twin Falls County, there is this thing called Western Days, which they do every year, um, which is just a celebration of pioneers settling out west and all that, and there's that whole thing. But I didn't, I haven't seen anything regarding red face. But like, what's what? celebrations or pioneer celebrations are you referring to in which people dress up in red face? The, uh, a more recent, um, incident was involved the well, the community of Wellsville, Utah. Okay. Uh, they would have their pioneers day celebration every year and they mm. would, uh, dress up in red face and dress up as Indians and portray a, an attack on a, a wagon train of immigrants um, in the park, in the park, and it would be done every year. It was done for over a hundred years. Wow. And, uh, a, uh, writer for the Salt Lake Tribune, um, got, got wind of it and went and videotaped one of these events and wrote a column about it in, uh, uh, 2017 in the Salt Lake Tribune. Mm -hmm. And, uh, they caught a lot of flack for that. Uh, and they and they really defended it as being a long-standing tradition that uh, shouldn't be questioned. But uh, people started saying, "Well, you know, this this is more like the Mountain Meadows Massacre than it is uh, Indians attacking white people." Yeah. Um, and I think when they recognized that this was resurrecting the truth, that they were actually portraying what they really did, um, they stopped it. Wow. I just have to just sit, sit with that for a second. Like they were actually like they thought they were. <laughs> just want to just want to comment on this. So they dress <laughs> up in red face. They wear a bunch of a, the very offensive garb, you know, appropriating uh, inappropriately appropriating uh, indigenous peoples. So they dress that up. They then act out a, a scenario where the this actually happened, where immigrants were massacred, and they're trying to portray it as if they're Indians that did it, Native American people did it, but actually they're just portraying what actually literally happened, which is settlers dressed up as in red face and then actually killed immigrants. Like that's literally what happened. Exactly. So <laughs> exactly. Oh my God. Oh. Sorry, I just had to reflect on that. That's like kind of almost, it's, it's ironic in all the worst ways, I guess. Yeah, and it's, it's common. <laughs> it's common in this whole region that <sighs> Mormons will do that. They'll dress up as Indians and portray these attacks. And so with this, this kind of story, this whole uh, generally accepted view, it's being perpetuated by these celebrations and mm. at Massacre Rocks. They keep... Uh, representing that that native people were savages that brutally attacked women and children and and slaughtered people when in fact it was the Mormons who were doing it.